my simple rule of thumb for an index of how collectivist, individualistic a culture is, is watch people eat. If you're in Italy, how do they eat? Big bowls get passed around the table, right? Everyone's sharing. Um, China, big lazy Susan in the middle, 18 people sitting around the table. You can't eat without attending to the other 17 people or chopsticks will go flying off. So you have to be connected with each other as you eat. The United States, you do a drive through you ask for the Happy Meal, it's in your own little box, you sit down. <laughs> Who's more individualistic, right? Okay, so that's one way, now you know what I mean by collectivist versus individualistic cultures. Now you can ask the question, who's the loneliest? The collectivist cultures. Now that isn't a surprise and I'll explain why. First of all, you have to understand that just like hunger, pain, and thirst, loneliness is the exception. Most of us, most of the time, are not lonely. All of us are capable, in fact, all of us undoubtedly have experienced the pain of loneliness. It's a feature just like hunger, pain, and thirst. We've evolved this because it's adaptive for us. It's good to have for our species. If you did not have physical pain or modern medicine, you would not survive because you would not know you were doing damage to your own body. Social pain, loneliness, helps us as a species because it maintains these powerful, important collectives, groups, that are good for us in enabling us to survive and prosper in difficult circumstances. Right? But it's bad for us as individuals when we get stuck, just like it's bad for us to, be, to go long periods being hungry, thirsty, or in physical pain. That's the trick. So now we're talking only about those individuals who temporarily are feeling lonely because perhaps of bereavement or distancing from friends and family. Well, the reason collectivist cultures feel lonelier is because the norms are to be connected. And so looking around and finding yourself disconnected is an even more painful episode than if you're used to others and yourself not being connected. And I'll give you within our culture a case in point. Around the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, those are holidays where we celebrate friends and family. If you're isolated on those particular days, your feeling of loneliness is greater than if it's during a work day. Right? Why? Because the cultural norms for those days are that you be connected. And that's the cultural norms that exist in collectivist culture. So that's why you get the difference that you get. Question to your right. Hi. My name is Mina. I have a question. Did you see a physiological or emotional difference in dealing with loneliness, loneliness for people who self-define themselves introverted versus extroverted? Yeah. We don't find physiological differences. That's one of the interesting things. The big difference between introverts and extroverts is how many people they need connections with in order to not feel lonely. And it, in both cases, it's not very many, right? For an introvert, it might take one. For an extrovert, it might take three. Something on that order. So, you know, it's surprising. People think, oh, I need to be connected with, I need to be the most popular person. That'll make me not lonely. It's actually not true. And there are many popular, popular by some standards, kids that aren't, in fact, free of feelings of loneliness. So it's having deep, high-quality relationships, not the number of relationships. Introverts and extroverts do differ in how many such relationships make them feel well-loved. But uh, it's, and that's where it's not the physiological differences given that they feel lonely that we find the differences in. We, th we thought we might find that. We did not. Question to your left. Yes. Actually, she took my question, but I'll throw a different one at you. Okay. All right. Um, collectivism, how does that fly in? Does that imply that diversity is a lonely experience? We celebrate diversity. Yes. That seems that we celebrate Loneliness. Well, I actually have come to be a real fan of loneliness. Let me just first say, just as if... <laughs> I mean, if you think about what our species would be like without loneliness, it would not be nearly as endearing a species. I honestly think loneliness, which compels us to form these connections and bond with others, gives us what we call humanity. 